Hello, I'm Dr Eugenia Cheng, Senior Lecturer of Pure Mathematics at the University of Sheffield, and I have a question for you. Or rather, a student asked me this question at the end of a lecture, and unfortunately, I didn't know the answer. So I'm going to work it out now. And the question was, how many Maltesers can you fit in your mouth at once? So let's see, shall we? Mm. Oh. Were you counting? I think that was fifteen. Now this is actually a very serious math problem. It's called the sphere packing problem. Sphere packing. And the question is, what's the best way of packing spheres into a given space so that you can get as many spheres in as possible? Because as we all know, Maltesers are spheres more or less. Usually you don't pack them into your mouth you try packing them into a nice even shape like this. Not that I'm saying that my mouth isn't an even shape, but if you just pour them into this shape, then they're a bit random. And you might try and line them all up in an organized fashion. Now, if I line them up all next to each other, then it's pretty obvious that if you line them up all next to each other in a grid, that's not going to be the most efficient way of doing it. It's like a six pack of Coke. Why do they line them up like that? It's pretty obvious that when you put it in your fridge, if you take them out and you put them in your fridge, you're not going to line them up like that, are you? You're going to line them up like that because you'll be able to fit more of them in. And like that, they're closer to each other, so they take up less space. So we can try doing this with the Maltesers as well. And if you do it with the Maltesers, you see you get this nice hexagonal grid shape are they going to stay in one place? And in that case, each Malteser is touching six other Maltesers all the way around it. Whereas if you do them all lined up like this, then each round is only touching four around it, and they're a little bit further away. So that's what you're going to do if you're going to put them all in a flat row. So what about if we were going to layer up more than one layer of Maltesers? We've got our nice hexagonal grid on this layer, so let's start putting some other Maltesers on top. Now, of course, now that we've learnt not to put them in a, a grid fashion like that, we're not going to try and balance the Maltesers on top of each other. The sensible thing to do is to put them nicely on the, tri on the little triangles, the spaces in between three Maltesers, like that and hope that it doesn't all escape. Now you'll notice if you look closely that we're not using every single triangular shaped gap because we're only using every other one because if we used every single one that would be too close together. So we can make another nice hexagonal shaped grid on top of this one and this is the best way of putting another layer of Maltesers on top and any Greengrocer will tell you that's completely obvious when you're making boxes of oranges. It's obvious that that's the best way of doing it. Now, the question is, what about if you wanted to put a third layer on? Because if you put a third layer on, there are actually two different ways of doing it that are both equally good as each other. The thing is that if you look down, straight down onto the grid, then you can see that there are two possible places that you can put the Malteser. You can either put it directly above one that's on the bottom layer. So if I put it there, it's actually directly above a Malteser that's on the bottom layer. And then I could line up all the Maltesers like that. And if you look at it from this angle, you can see it makes a slightly less satisfying pattern. But I could choose to put it in the other place. I could instead offset it a bit so it's not directly above one that's on top of the bottom layer like that. Now it's not directly above one that's on the bottom layer and it makes a much more satisfying pattern from this point of view. Now actually those two are both equally dense packings of spheres and you can keep going 
you can either do the, the first two like I did and then put the one directly on top, or you can put it a bit skew if, and then you can make all sorts of different patterns alternating around those different ways. And you can try it for yourself, see what different patterns you can make for that, but they'll all be equally dense. And the density of that packing is pi over root 18, which is about three quarters. Whereas if you put them all in a grid neatly on top of each other, it would only be pi over six, which is a little bit less than a half. So this one, you get much more Malteser into your space than you would if you did it with that one. So the question remains, why do cans of Coke get stacked like that? Why, why don't they package them up a bit wonky and fit more cans of Coke into their warehouse? 